Hey folks, welcome back to the Combo Class Bonus Channel. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and since it stopped raining in my Combo Classroom today, I figured it was a good time to teach another bonus math lesson in between the main channel episodes. And today's bonus topic is gonna be if or when it's possible to add a prime number plus a prime number to equal a prime number. Now remember, all positive integers basically come in three types. There's one which gets a type of its own. It's the unit and the multiplicative identity. And multiplicatively is only made up of itself. Whereas numbers like two or three or five or seven are known as primes, because each of those can be made by one times itself. But there are no smaller factors of whole numbers that we could split them into. And then numbers like six or eight and stuff are composite numbers, because we could split them into a little prime factorization where six secretly is three times two, and eight secretly is two times two times two. And we can see that composites do have a prime structure to them made up of more than one prime multiplying together into each composite. Now, when we look at this question of if a prime plus a prime equals another prime, our first question should be, could any of these primes be the same one? Because we haven't clarified yet if they have to all be distinct different prime numbers, or if any of them could be copies of the same prime. But we can pretty quickly deduce that it would be impossible for this equation to work if any of them were copies of each other. If these two were the same prime, then our result would be twice that prime and have to be composite and not prime. And if these two were the same prime, or those two, the other one would have to be a zero, which isn't considered a prime number. And so the only way Way for this to hold would be if they're three distinct or different primes. And in fact, if we label them as three different ones, P1 plus P2 equals P3, we can see that secretly we're also figuring out the question of whether a prime minus a prime could be a prime. Because if this is true, then P3 minus either of these primes would equal the other. So secretly, if we ask, when can a prime plus a prime equal a prime, or when can a prime minus a prime equal a prime? It's the same question, just with them juggled around a bit there. But the same question of which possible primes can fit a trio like this. And if we look at something called parity in mathematics, which isn't parity with a D, it's P-A-R-I-T-Y, and the parity mathematically is essentially just whether something is even or odd. And there are other ways that can be applied mathematically, like what color a checkerboard square is, black ones versus white ones. And sometimes we could even analyze parity in terms of things being positive or negative or other comparisons. But typically we'll find it to mean, is the number even or odd? And if we look at a little chart of how parity works under addition, we notice, like I've shown, it's the same as a mod 2 addition chart. And mod 2 is the realm of numbers where we're just talking about their remainder after we were to divide them by 2. And you can imagine that even numbers essentially are ones that mean zero in mod two because they, once you divide them by two, don't have a remainder. And numbers that we call congruent to one in mod two are our odds because those are one higher than a multiple of two or have a remainder of one. It's also the last digit a number would have if written in binary. Even numbers in binary end in a zero digit and odd numbers end in a one digit. And if we add these up, we can see zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one either way is one. But one plus one, which would normally give us a two, well, two turns back into zero on this chart because two, when divided by two, has no extra remainder. It can divide cleanly. And so 
Here we're gonna actually put a zero for in mod two, what something congruent to one plus another congruent to one add up to. And that's the same as the concept that an odd number plus an odd number is always an even number. So if we look at this mod two chart where zeros are evens and ones are odds, we can see, okay, the only way to generate an odd is by adding an odd and an even. If we either go even plus even or odd plus odd, we are going to get an even. Now, if we look at this last prime we're trying to generate, the P3 there, could that possibly be even? Well, if that was even, it would have to be 2, because 2 is the only even prime. So if that was a 2, these would be too small or even need to be negative or something and couldn't both be primes. We can't say 1 plus 1 is 2, because 1 isn't technically considered a prime. So this last one has to end up being a number congruent to one in mod two, meaning that the two things we added up to get it must contain one that's congruent to zero and one that's congruent to one. And although this is a mathematical, more thorough way of making sure this is true, it may already make sense to you that if we want to generate an odd number, we would have to add an odd and an even. We can't go even plus even or odd plus odd, because odd plus odd always generates an even number. And so, if one of these has to be even and the other has to be odd, well, the even one has to be two, because like we noted, two is the only even prime. So essentially what we now have is two plus one of those primes equals this third prime. So now when we unravel this, we can see that the types of primes that fit this trio must be two along with two primes that are two apart from each other, which are known as twin primes, primes that land on consecutive odd numbers like 5 and 7, 11 and 13, and so on. And it's still not proven by mathematicians whether there's an infinite amount of those or not. Although it is relatively easy to prove there's an infinite amount of prime numbers, or that there's an infinite, uh, what we wouldn't call infinite, but up to arbitrarily large gaps between the primes that approach what seems like an infinite size between the primes before another hits. And we can prove things like that quite easily, like I've done on some main channel episodes, but we still haven't, as mathematicians, been able to prove whether there's an infinite amount of twin primes or not. The twin prime conjecture may be solved, verified either uh, true or false within our lifetime. I like to think it'll be proven true before long, but hard to predict. So when we look at numbers that fit things like this, we have two plus three is five, three and five being twin primes. Two plus five is seven, five and seven being twin primes. And essentially, it would always need to be two and some twin primes. And since we don't know if there's an infinite amount of twin primes yet, we don't know if there's an infinite amount of primes where that is possible, where the sum of two primes is another prime or the difference of two primes is another prime. So although I don't have an answer for this today, it is one of the big unsolved conjectures in math still, I find it interesting that by thinking about a seemingly different question of when can two primes add to another or when can the difference of two primes be another secretly turns into a fundamental age-old question of are there infinitely many primes that land two apart? And the way we can confirm that is by not only thinking about what a prime means, but by thinking about how evens and odds, due to them really representing characters that work in this system called mod 2, evens and odds have some interesting patterns that sometimes make it possible, impossible, or so only sometimes possible to have simple ideas like that, prime plus prime equals prime, hold true. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure if there's an infinite amount of those. I will be the first to tell you if the twin prime conjecture gets solved by anyone. So, of course, stay tuned and hopeful for that. Hope you enjoyed a little bonus lesson. I'll be back for a lot more teaching soon, and have a wonderful day.